Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the Wake and Bake episode number 38. I literally woke up not very long ago, I'm not gonna lie. I'm just sitting here up in Whistler. Not sure if you guys can really see the vibes here. There we go. I'm literally right in the main sort of Whistler Hall, Whistler Square, I should say. Give you guys a little shot of Whistler. And there it is. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Probably just gonna have to focus on me for a while. I'll give you a little bit of a show on the view a little later on. Woke up this morning, I had my, my XL banger. This is an old banger. I haven't put in my pipe in a long time. It's got a minor little, little chazness on it. Not too bad. But my quartz banger. I went to pull it out today. I went like this and it just snapped right on the neck. Now the beautiful people at DC Glass are going to be sending me a new one, as well as uh, some DC Glass cleaner to give away to you guys. Today, we're going to be giving away a ceramic nail. I figured someone would want it. I still have yet to ship the Boss, the Ceram pen, and the hat. So I'm gonna go ship all of it today, but I still wanna give something away. Um, bad connection, well, hopefully it's still pushing through. Um, one of the things I wanted to uh, start off right away for the day was to get the question out. And so the question today is going to be a video that I did in Amsterdam with uh, Rob Clark. And uh, you'll want to know the name of this video or you'll never figure it out. <clears throat> what I want to know is where Rob and I are on our way to. Rob and I are in a tuk-tuk. Uh, and we're on our way to an event and I want you guys, the question is going to be to tell me where I am going with Mr. Rob Clark. Now, the name of the, of the uh, don't just start answering if you, ha if you don't know, come on, just fucking go look at the video. The video is called Amsterdam Cannabis Cup Part 14, Tuck Tuck with Rob Clark. It's a great video, very few views, and uh, it's just me and Rob cruising through the streets of, of, um, of uh, Amsterdam. Yeah, we're in Amsterdam on a tuk-tuk. So we're on our way to an event at this, in this particular video. It literally says where we're going in the first like two minutes of the video. So if you can race over there to the Amsterdam Cannabis Cup, uh, part 14, Tuck Tuck with Rob Clark. In the meantime, I think we should get our wake and bake on here. I'm not a big wake and, uh, red light guy at all, to be honest. I'm gonna really have to watch. Ah, uh, you're close, you're close, you're close, you're close, you're close. Come on, guys, what I want to see, where is, where is it? Someone almost said it. <laughs> oh my god, okay. I want to hear it. No, it's okay. Yes, it is. It is the Sheraton Thanksgiving dinner, but that's what I wanted to hear. Captain Chubba gets it. It's the DNA Thanksgiving dinner. It's not the Sheraton. It's at the Sheraton, but it's the DNA Thanksgiving dinner. So if someone said that before uh, Captain Chuba, please let me know. Otherwise, it's Captain Chuba that got it. He tried to say it the first time, but it came out all garbled. Lots of people said the Sheraton. Lots of people said Thanksgiving, but the correct answer I was looking for was the DNA Thanksgiving. So there it is. That is a brand new ceramic nail coming your way, buddy. And uh, yeah, in the meantime, let's have a dab. The DNA Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, what? Now I've broken my torch and it won't work? Ooh, that would be bad. That would be bad. I did. I broke my torch. My torch does not have a, f a little flicker anymore. I don't. We're going to have to fix this. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I can't. How can we do a wake and bake without getting baked? Wow, let me figure this out. I will figure this out, guys. I will figure this out. Let's do this. I don't have a lighter. I barely I don't have anything right now. I don't have a tool. This will be this will be a challenge. Let me see what I got on me here. Let me see what I got on me. I got this glass thing that I might be able to move that around with a little bit. 
Did you see that? The Method 7s fixed the torch only in Whistler. Could such a wonderful thing happen? I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty nervous. My sparker looked dead. Right after giving away a nail too, I thought, wow. Man, I'll tell you, it was the Method 7 glasses. The Method 7 glasses. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy, I can't even tell you. Oh man. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit nervous. Amen, make it so. We gotta have at least one wake and bake rep. How do I contact for the nail? Okay, Captain Troop, a very good co uh, question. You're going to email me your full address at bcbubbleman at icloud.com? Yeah, I was a bit scared too, I'm not gonna lie. Well, you know what it was? It was bent. My igniter was bent inside. I put the shades in right at the end here, the little shade, and I just bent it up. When I saw it move, I felt pretty confident that the lighter was going to flick on. So what a nice, what a nice time. Here we go. We're going to hit a little bit of this Congo Lees. Whoops, falling out, but that's okay because it's all in one chunk. Actually, there's one more chunk right there. Nice and shattery. I'm gonna do a little bit of, oh, let's make sure we stay alive here. I haven't really said hello to everyone like Johnny Potsmoker and Al Dam and Kevin Thorben and Ike Jones and Trev ST. Oh, don't worry about it. Sometimes we don't get the notifications, so it happens. All right, I didn't even bring my, that's okay, we'll get this sorted. We'll get this sorted. Now we know how they got their name, right? You're the man, thank you. I'm just glad it worked out, I'm not gonna lie. At least get one rip in, right? Oh, I'm in Whistler, I'll show you in a second here. Don't even have a carb. It's working. <coughs> oh my gosh. That is that great. <coughs> Gotta go in real quick and grab. I think I didn't. Maybe I have them in my pocket. I wanna make, oh, I do. Look at that. Hello, Mr. Q Tip. Mr. Q Tip. All right, so yes, this is, uh, I guess that's, uh, over here we have Rainbow. Cougar is even further in this direction. It's kind of hiding over here. Then we have Rainbow, and then there's Sprout. And <coughs> these are mountains that are across the street from Whistler that can also be snowboarded on and sledded on and are really quite, quite beautiful mountains. Let me get myself into position here. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna go snowboarding today, OG. I'm looking forward to Gapper Day. Gapper Day is always pretty much like the favorite of the year. It's the last day. Um, you guys have probably seen footage of it before where they melt out a little bit of a pond. Just sort of naturally happens at one spot. That's usually where Gapper Day happens. And pe it's also the mountain bike uh, park opened up yesterday. So we have the mountain bike park opening up yesterday. You can see a schwack of people right now down there. It looks like it's a class that they're getting ready to go on. And uh, yeah, real nice. Let's keep Q-tipping this bowl. Acetone will clean the old Chaz. I don't know. I don't really like to fuck with acetone. I really don't. I'm not a big acetone fuck with guy. All right, so there's the mountain bikers down there. Think. Yeah, that's them. What's a popular place across there? It's called the Crystal Lodge. I'm right, right in the village. I mean, shit. I'm more than right in the village. Do you guys want to take a bong rip and see if we can't get you guys to the base of the mountain where the mountain bikes come down? Maybe we could go see that view real quick. I think that would be pretty cool. Give you an idea of just how uh, centralized I am here in Whistler. Let's get some of this Chaz out. We needed to heat it up a little bit. All right, here we go. Be gone, Chaz. Be gone. Be gone, Chaz. Uh-oh. Oh, 
It's amazing that this torch is still working, to be honest. I drove over it with my dirt bike about a year and a half ago. And when I did, I bent the inside, um, the little flicker there. So if you've watched any of my videos, you probably noticed that my torch takes on average of about eight to 10 clicks to actually turn on. Dechaz de Banga. Well, this is an old banger, I have to admit. I'm not overly worried that I don't have my cleaner and that it's getting a little bit chazzed because uh, A, uh, DC Glass Cleaner, uh, DC Glass is, uh, Dark Crystal Glass is sending me a new banger uh, as well as um, some of the, the, the glass cleaner. So the new banger, I will admit, I'm going to keep. I'm definitely going to keep the new banger and uh, yeah, and use it as often as I can. Hey, we got 148 people watching right now, and I do appreciate every one of you. Thanks for tuning in. If you feel like you're enjoying the video, give us a thumbs up. Uh, it helps us with the sort of algorithms of YouTube showing up on the sidebar of other videos and being suggested to people. So, putting quartz to great use. There you go. Hope you're enjoying your day. Yes, Jerry, number 44. I hope you're enjoying your day. I'm in Whistler, so it's hard not to enjoy my day. Uh, I've got lots of good friends here, and it's a super good vibe always. I'm always pretty happy when I'm here. Yeah, excellent. What's your way to clean bangers and de-chaz them? Well, the best way is to not chaz them. I'm kind of like when people say, how do you clean out spider mites from your garden? I'm like, set off a nuclear bomb uh, and then rebuild the building. Kind of the same way with chazzed out bangers. I'll just throw them away or give them away if someone wants it. Oh, really, David? <coughs> well, I'll tell you this much. There's definitely a pattern for my videos that have more likes. <coughs> I show up in the sidebar more often. More views, more likes. <coughs> that was an amazing rip. Better de -chaz it right away. That's why we got the Q-tips. There we go. <coughs> How can they help the trending if they're not in the log in the algorithms? <coughs> that was a really good rip. Got my nose dripping. Got my eyes kind of watering up. No more chaz. Let's talk. All right, Frankie Joseph. What can we talk about? Uh, we did talk about the Tuk Tuk video. Please go and watch that, not just for the answer that, uh, that the gentleman gave, but because it's a fun video. And you don't get to see Rob as often, and Rob is just an awesome guy. Good fun dude to hang out with, for sure. Not sure what I'm gonna do here in Whistler, but it's gonna be some sort of adventurous shit. Uh, I got my dirt bike up here, so I could go rip around in the mountains. There's tons of great trails in Whistler and around Whistler. Most people don't really use them. Most people, there's not a big dirt bike culture out here, which is strange. There's a huge mountain bike culture. There's also a huge growing culture. We have one of the licensed producers in Canada is right here in Whistler. And uh, there's also many, many, many people who live up in this area that grow cannabis for, uh, you know, 10 years plus. Um, I have my bubble hash in an ice chest with dry ice. Not too sure about that, Dustin. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, if, it, if you haven't, here's the thing. If you froze your bubble hash with water in it, it's going to be hard to sieve because you're going to have to uh, let it melt. And in the melting, that water is going to be a bit funky. So you're probably going to have to sieve it. I mean, sorry, microplane it. That's what we do with the frozen bubbles. And uh, I would microplane that, depending on where you live, onto... I do the pizza boxes. You can do parchment lined if you're worried about it. But I just go right onto the pizza box even. And uh, for my own self, I'm not talking about people commercially producing uh, some lab-grade bubble for, like, a giant company and all that shit regulations and this, that, and the other thing. I'm just talking about how I started in this industry, which was showing people, regular people, like all of you and me, 
how to make hash at home safely and efficiently. And it turned into this whole thing where people were like, oh, it's dangerous if you use that machine and you gotta use lab grade this. And, and I get that and I'm down with that for the large scale where you're commercially producing and you're selling it to people for a profit. Uh, yeah, you better have all that in place. But when you're just at home, you know, you'd be surprised. I smoked bubble for, you know, a decade plus and never got sick from the way we made it, touching it with our fingers. Oh no, we touched it with our fingers. People are fucking tripping balls. I get it. I don't want to take some hash that's been finger fucked by someone, but if I'm touching my own hash, don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sure, Anthony Moraldo. Try to refresh. Solventless is best. Well, it's all an opinion, right? Yeah, well, Chase, we'll do it. If I can get the Harley registered, we were going to go to the Pemberton Festival this year together, and it got canceled, so we kind of got screwed by that. Uh, no, I'm not gone. I'm right here. I'm right here. You're an inspiration. Well, thank you, FSS. I will, uh, I'll try to live up to that perspective. Well, Johnny Potsmoker, it's all about Tony and Advesa moving the lab, moving and pr producing a lab there. Once we've got teams of people we can train with my SOP uh, and be able to put in there to get the work done, so many times, you, you know, the SOP is so specific that if you step out of it in any little aspect of just the way you're like, oh, what if we just do it like this? There's so many times during the simple procedure of making bubble where you'll hear someone go, well, why can't we just do this? What if we just did do this? Because the way human brains operate is everyone thinks they've got the better idea that it's going to be more efficient. Even when it's not, people will still think it is. So, does recording what you do ever get in the way? I've tried making videos and it seems like so much to watch. To watch over to make sure the camera doesn't mess up or anything, etc. That's just... Yes, Chase, it's a nightmare. There's all sorts of problems. There's all sorts of, you know... These live videos are great because they're one on... You know, you just go. But the edited videos that I go out and I film, there's all sorts of things. You have to edit out things that maybe your friends said or if your friends looked stupid in any way. You can't put that on the internet. you got to edit those parts out. Uh, I missed one one time. My friend Lincoln bent over and his plumber butt was hanging out and all the comments were about his plumber butt. He laughed about it, but... It's not really, people don't like being laughed at. People don't like looking silly. And so, um, yeah, I mean, unless it's for the sort of comedic sense, but when you're not trying to be, uh, it just becomes embarrassing. So lots of stuff like that, where people might say things that you, that is like maybe in the background while you're recording and it's something you can't put up online either because it's maybe some sort of sensitive information. Uh, but they said it right during a part that now you have to strip the audio and put something new in. There's so many aspects of uh, shit that happens like that. You can't even imagine. Yes, yeah, Sal, it's impossible. It's why, listen, if you watch Johnny B in my old videos, it's so funny because, you know, we, ha we had this great energy. And, you know, as we did it more and more and more, John started really, like, getting excited about people recognizing him and being like, he just loved it. And I was more like, eh... I felt like it was a danger to love it. I felt like it was like one of the deadly sins or something where you're like, don't be proudful of yourself too much or, you know, maybe your head will get big. And not that John's head got big. He's the most humble dude in the world. But if I had done that, my head would have gotten big. So uh, it kind of worked out that, you know, as John got more interested in doing his own channel and being excited about this stuff, we started clashing in videos. And uh, so that's... Yeah, that's kind of how that happened. Uh, and then came back around, you know, we came back around. I'd be doing videos with him right now if he wasn't so busy and I wasn't so busy. Just both on two different uh, pathways right now. But I do look very forward to um, uh, to hanging out with Johnny and filming some videos with him again soon. Maybe I'll invite him on to a wake and bake. That's what we'll do. He's always down for a wake and bake, guaranteed. Celebrates wake and bakes and 420s daily, that guy. All right, let's do this. Let's run down and see if we can't, um, let's see if we can't go and see the mountain bike park at the base of the mountain. You guys have an interest in doing that or what? All right, let's see if we can do this. Kick on the shoes. All right. Here we 
we go. Let's do this. All right, well, the elevator is on the fifth floor right now, which is a good sign, because we're on the fourth. So instead of having to go all the way up four floors, which is, it is a very, very, very slow elevator. Oh, cheers from Moscow, Russia. Don't forget your key, guess what? None of these places have keys. They have keypads, no keys. Which I thought was pretty cool. All right, I think we're live again. Hopefully we don't get bounced off here. Let's see what happens. And here we go, man. Yeah, Wi-Fi drop, that's cool though. Elevator too. But we're back. Oh yeah, house church is tomorrow, I forgot about that. Crazy. Alright, here we are, we're making it to the base of the mountain, guys. You can see that's Whistler up there to the top, right? Um, that building in the background is the Whistler gondola. And then, uh, the black home gondola is just right there. This is day two of the mountain bike park. So it's pretty fresh right now. Let me take you guys for a little spin around Wiss here. Uh, sometimes, yeah, I do have a lot of friends here. They might say B-Man, they might say Mark. Uh, and then there's our awesome, uh, last time I was in Whistler actually, I met a kid from Minnesota. He might even be watching right now. And he uh, recognized me in a grocery store with my family. Pulled me aside and we spoke. Yep. And I ended up I meet, meeting That's up with him later. Right? And we, uh, we blazed down, we blazed him down hard. Actually, he got so lit, he had to leave, like, immediately. And then he texted me, or, yeah, hit me up later and said what an incredible experience it was. It was awesome. He gave me some stones. Really nice kid. All right, so this is the mountain bike where the kids are waiting to get picked up for mountain biking. Beginner, novice, intermediate, strong intermediate, and then the last one's advanced experts. All right, so this is just coming back around to the back of the hotel that we're at right now. Where we were looking down originally. Yeah, it's pretty darn nice, Tricomb City. I think that wasn't my... Is someone screaming? This looks so awesome. It's just so awesome. Well, let's see what we got here. I guess uh, what I will say is Whistler is awesome. <laughs> it really is. It's a beautiful day right now. And uh, yeah, I'm just the random freak walking around talking to my phone. <laughs> what can you say? What can you say? Yeah, lots of bikes. Grind all day. Yeah, Whistler. Well, I don't have a ton more to talk about, but I will say that I did enjoy this lovely, lovely walk. Yesterday I heard UB40 playing. This is the kind of place Whistler is. I just hear UB40 playing. And uh, I'm not, I was never a UB40 fan, but I grew up in the 80s, and so obviously I knew all the songs that I could hear coming out of my balcony quite loud and quite clear. And it was just literally right on that stage right there, and I'm staying just right at the end of there, so. Pretty fun, pretty cool, gotta love Wiss. 
Uh, I was here when the Canadians won the Olympic hockey team. Uh, the game, the last Olympic goal or whatever for 2010, and it pretty much finished off the Olympics. I was here in Whistler, saw that on the huge outdoor screens, and then the whole, this whole village area filled up. And it didn't only fill up with people that were here, it filled up with the families of the Olympic athletes that were Canadian, all the Canadian Olympic athletes that were here in Whistler, and then all the people that happened to be here. Uh, and it was pretty incredible to be a part of that, just to feel like I, I was never big into the Olympics before, but if they come to your town and they spend like a billion dollars throwing a party, I don't know. It was pretty fun here in Whistler anyway. Well, am I still going live? I can't even tell. No more comments. I don't see any comments. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to finish up regardless. Thanks for watching, everybody, and as always, may the full melt bless your bowl sooner than later. Peace out.